Um, average. You know, we work pretty late. We've been working pretty late this season. Uh, probably about forty to sixty ton on an easy day. Really? And if we're staying home 12, 13 hours, and we're doing about 80 ton. Everything's getting bagged. You're not doing anything in bulk. No, we do not do bulk feed. You are now watching the 2023 season of Farming with Duffy Ag. You're Brody? Yeah. And where are we? Marty Farms. In what town is this in Ohio? Boy. Boy. Ohio. So 1,200 cows? Yep. Three times a day? Yes, sir. <laughs> Jonah doesn't want to be on film any longer. He's had enough of that. So we'll show you around here. Mike Lass from Farmhand Mike was actually here two years ago filming um, since he's from around this area. So double 30, they must be finishing up. Another basement, second basement that wherever he went. Yeah, so it all comes down through here and then okay. run down. So, same as when we were at uh, Wood Notch there. Basements make life so much easier, so each unit goes up. Got your shutoffs and everything else like that. And it's convenient for anything work related. If you got something going on, you can be down here. And they can be up there still milking along. Wow. Really sharp. Yeah, you guys, uh, kind of like MVP. Yeah. So, direct loading tankers, it's all going to cheese. We did pass a truck yesterday and they informed us that it is one of their other trucks. That This isn't farm's truck that's hired in. Um, baby blue looks really sharp. So, they got three tankers there. So six tankers sitting around right now. Well, one's loaded. Or I think they just switched over to this tank here. So when you're using the straw and hay for ration and for bedding, or? From the old barn? Or yeah. Where's yeah, that manure? The front pit is just from that barn. Oh, okay. Just that front barn. And then this one will come into here and the open lot will come into there. And this gets so thick, that's why he's pump he's pumping out of the back pit into it. Okay. It's stirring. It's so thick he can't pump it back. So how many gallons does that hold? your cows are on this site? This here? And there. there. Okay. Those are all our peppers. And all the hutches and everything are right down the road. Couple of dillers. 
under the, that's on the pump, it'll sit on the frack tank. Yep. So, the frack tank will get parked on the end of the field, and then the swing pipes will swing into the diller, into the frack tank, and the frack tank has a pipe on it. That'll be just swung out on a stand. So, noon tankers, as we know, we run with the Moore brothers. Uh, they're noon and uh, Valley side. They got it, some dillers. Same frack tank as uh, a lot of what rolls around. It's dry hill and everything else like that. And then the husky tank, so. These tankers are actually, does it have a year of production? 2015, so. They can't spread in the winter because of being the size of it, uh, being underneath uh, all the requirements. So it's not like their trailers run in the winter where New York, there's a lot of manure get, that gets moved in the winter because there's not enough storage. And they also got this little John Deere power unit here, which is pretty cool. So they're sucking liquid out of the back and agitating it up into the front because of the solids that come out of these barns. It looks like all the barns are Lester too, which is cool. doesn't have those just hanging out gas wells. they were gas wells they no, they still run they do yeah they're on timers so they're only running for someone day. okay oh yeah they, they go the ones you can see they're still they're functional Big girl. This ain't big. You should see the one that's sitting in there. You got another one over there? I'll buy another one in the spring. Yeah, this is where we keep all the nice tractors in the women. That's one. 970. This is pretty new too then, right? It's a 2020 or 21. This will be the third fall using it. That barely has any touch straw yet. Oh, so you round bale all your straw or you square bale yeah, some? Round bale it. We, we'll make 4,000 little squares. Little squares? Yeah. Yeah. That's not fun. No, no. Everybody told me I should little square and sell it to horse people, but nope. We do it all for our hutches. And then oh, that okay. first barn, we can't fit the big bale better in there. Makes sense. So it's... These are work horses too. 2004? 11. That combine's a 2012. Wow. I wouldn't have guessed that. No. It, it's well kept. Yeah. See, like these, these haven't been washed because they work ground all spring. Yeah. So these do tillage work? Yes, these are the two main tillage tractors. You got that sulfur, and what else you got? We got a sulfur, we got a uh, coon field finisher. Okay. Turbo till 20, 21 chain chisel. Everybody's going to ask, look at that, 435.
560 diesel. Yeah. Like, this storage is insane. I would. Someday. Someday I'll have everything undercover and be quite a lot. So 340, 8RX. Quite the operation. Yeah, the wide tracks. Makes sense. Hmm. Okay, so shop. That's a 740, right? Or 750. 750. Oh, okay, so there's another combine in there. We talked for a while. Radio is playing, so we can't do the copyright thing. See the American flag with the farm name and everything? That's just American. Because you were saying you don't have any grass in front of you. Like you wouldn't have any of this manicured lawn. It's all like, grazed up. We, we just, yesterday we just got a full foot full behind. Yeah. We just behind Makes it a little quick. We should make it a little quicker. We haven't got it yet. See where it begins and then come in yeah. and fire it so off. explain the whole thing you do bird seed yep. yeah it's on a large large scale yeah, yeah pretty large scale i mean we don't do any livestock feed or anything just the wild bird seed but okay. it started back in the 80s he was growing sunflower seeds they had a little bit of a surplus and someone told him you should try bagging it up and selling it yeah and ever since it's grew into this and you were saying through COVID it was pretty wild because Everybody was at home? Yeah. Everybody was feeding the birds and <laughs> everybody was uh, sitting around doing much of nothing. And yeah, it really took off. I mean, once we built this production facility, it picked up quite a bit just because production also picked up quite a bit. Our sales girl was getting a lot of customers that were further out. We're up in New Jersey, New York, down to, we have a pretty big supplier down in Maryland and we shipped about twice a year out to the Bermuda. So Really? Yeah. All under the same name? Yep. Murders a lot. And we do a lot of private label for, you know, heritages, agways, oh, okay. those other big co ops. We do quite a bit for them. Makes sense. And our bird seed as oh. well. Let's let's see what it what it takes. Yeah, we'll start outside. Oh, boy, boy. <laughs> Here's our cleaning building. Yeah, this is our cleaner building. I'm in charge of running this and ordering all of our different grains. The trucks will come in and uh, scale off over there on the other side of that okay. white building. And then it'll unload into this pit. And that dirty grain goes up into one of these four bins that you pick from. And there are several different screens up there for each different grain that you want to clean. You know? So this is like a shaker? Or? Yeah, it shakes back and forth and there's like little balls in the bottom beneath the screens that bounces up all the loose stuff. So you get every okay. every good bit that you can. And then all the fines and holes that get cleaned out go to our fines bill and get returned back to the dairy feed. So okay. Pretty much zero waste. You use everything that comes in. Yep. So how many loads do you usually get of seed in a week? Or? I guess it would be product at that point. Yeah, um, just depends on how busy we are. We usually have scheduled out oil sunflowers once a week, every week, and then he'll schedule the other stuff. Milo comes in from Maryland, well, probably about what, once a month? Uh, maybe twice. Twice a month. Then we get our oats in that, oats and peas from Canada. We get a lot of stuff from out west, the millet and all that. Mm -hmm. 150 foot. So each each of the 21 bins is a different product then? Uh, or some, do you mix in between? Well, some might have, you know, there Multiple might be purposes. two bins 
that have millet in them that are on separate side of the structure. Okay. That is a way hopper, and there's one on the other side of that bin is a way hopper, and the platform is split into two parts between those minor and the main way hoppers. Oh, okay. So grain can run simultaneously, one to the minor hopper, one to the main hopper, while we're mixing the bird seed up and weighing it up. So we try to keep, you know, most of it split up so that it runs a little bit quicker and gets into the way hoppers faster. And you guys are five days a week running or? Six. Six. Yep. And then everything over there is the dairy side and the grain side or? Oh, that's uh, wheat. a lot of grain storage and then our old, our old cleaning building that is still our corn cracker. Oh, okay. Building. Underground pipe, brings it over. Yes, yeah, so that's all for the corn, beans, and wheat that we yep. Yep. combine, harvest. Yeah, and then I'll uh, take you in, show you the equipment, I'll show you the computer programming, and how we mix up a batch. It's pretty much a feed mill. Yes, yes it is. This is uh, built and structured off of one. The only thing that's a little bit different is uh, the way we run it. A lot of those new feed mills that, you know, they uh, automated. Yep. You can download a map on your phone and run it off of that. So this, a little redundant, but I'll show you. It's just pretty freaking cool. This is our power panel, and this is everything that's ran outside. Each individual bin motor, uh, the drag conveyors, the scale, the mixer, all the mixing legs, everything is ran off of this and has its own, most of them have their own BFDs. So. Yep. I mean, it is really cool compared to the other side with our old building. So in here, this is our operating system. This is the equipment. This is our operating system. Like I said, outside is split between our minor side and our main side for the hoppers. So you pull this up and it shows you each bin that you have outside, how much weight you've gone through, how much you still have available. Minor hopper side. Programming's pretty simple, but it took a couple days to catch on and learn. We got this company, Easy Automation, from uh, Minnesota. Come down and program it all for us. So it starts with uh, ingredients. 36 ingredients make uh, 100 different points of urgency. Holy smokes. Oh yeah. Enter your ingredients, put what bin they're in, or if it's a hand add, like we still hand add a lot of ingredients for like our pigeon blends and our fruit and nut blends. Yeah. And then you uh, go in and actually enter all the information in for each different bird seed blend. So right now, including straight grains and private label, we're at about 86, almost 90 different bird seed blends and items. And then all you and this do is an idea of those are some samples, all? yes. So it's, there's a little bit more that goes into this than just throwing things together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then when uh, you're ready to run an item, all you do is, you know, create, enter what item you want to run or what bird seed blend you want to run, the weight, where it's heading, destination loadout bin two, click release and it mixes it up 4,000 pounds at a time. Hmm. You can stand there and watch and like I said, the miner and the main, they'll both fill up simultaneously. Each bin is on a VFD that you can control. manually or let it as it runs if you put a different grain in a bin that's only ran oil sunflowers that auger and vfd will learn to slow down speed up a few more pulses at the end to get the weight right okay and this thing gets gets down to the, to and the pound. as far as mixing it is it an auger or is it just a drum yeah just that drum right there it's a roll mixer we don't have the ribbons in there it's just uh paddles. I can try and bag some out for you and get this empty so you can get a 
get a shot of the idea. aspirator system. So you can control all the legs, everything from here? Yep, and this is in manual mode. You can control pretty much everything. Right now, the bendicators are on, so that bin's full. It won't let me turn on any production equipment to go to the bins. Yeah. So I could try now. So there is safeties on it? Yes, there is. It's almost idiot proof. We've had a few idiots that have been <laughs> in here and messed a few things up, but it is almost idiot proof. Oh, Has errors, you know, if you get a little bit of resistance, it'll trip a breaker in there and let you know. Yep. Comes up yellow, as you can see. It'll show you that there's a problem and won't, won't let you operate and actually mess anything up. Okay. Then we can uh, go show you the warehouse real quick and show you all the different ones flyers and razors so we have a lot of uh okay. ingredients we get shipped in and end up dumping in by hand yep because you said you almost got a hundred ingredients or something oh uh, 40 ingredients 40 100 ingredients. different blends and straight grains that we do yeah because i saw cranberries on there and oh yeah well we used to cranberry farm so oh no kids did that for many years of my life yeah yeah we do uh a, bird, a few bird seed blends now, but the tried and true one that we always did is our farm fresh harvest. It's got banana chips, raisins, yep. cranberries, apricots, and now we're starting to do uh, apple chips in there, okay. as well as uh, peanuts and mixed nuts. We get our thistle seed, you know, niger seed for the finches. Yep. yep. We get that in totes, 2,000 pounds shipped in truckloads. And it's made life a heck of a lot easier when you can dump a tote instead of dumping 2,000 pounds, pounds of, of little bag. Pound bags, yeah. And peanuts. Yep, and shell peanuts. We just started that up. They did it for a while there and it became, a, became an issue, so they quit doing it. They started that up probably about uh, three, three, four years ago. Okay. And then these are, this is all of our stock items. Our economy is our best seller. And then our purple songbird, second best. These birdseed blends vary a little bit. You know, some don't have corn, some have peanuts, some yep. have a little bit less. Wild so, feed. how many bags a year do you think you do? Oh, uh, shoot. I'd really hate to put a number on it because my knees and back would uh, <laughs> they wanted probably to... quit on me then. Yep. Yeah, we do about um, average. You know, we work pretty late. We've been working pretty late this season. Uh, probably about 40 to 60 ton on an easy day. Really? And if we're staying home 12, 13 hours, and we're doing about 80 ton. Everything's getting bagged. You're not doing anything in bulk. No, we do not do bulk feed. Not at all. 40 ton. That's an, e that's an easy, easy day. day. <laughs> because, you know, we got 12 ton in this row. Yeah. That's what we'll run. We'll wait until the row's empty, run 12. Run 12, run 12. Then we do, you know, six of these, four of those, and yeah. And every pallet in here is two, just, just about 2,000 pounds. Okay. And then, you know, obviously we have orders going out. So afternoons usually just come over here, me and the other guy, and they keep production running, but me and another guy come over here and start orders, semi orders for the, the next day, the following day. And we're putting out, oh, probably easy on a, on a slow week five truckloads really? a week and then on our busy weeks it could be anywhere from eight to twelve it's a lot of bird seed yes it is like it's and you sit over by you that's not really a thing you guys don't feed birds not like us well, i might but hell it's just something new to me <laughs> yeah yeah it was new to me 10 years ago i didn't believe that we were uh, actually just making wild bird seed Two way hoppers outside are connected to a drag conveyor. That comes into this. Yep, drag conveyor comes in. And depending on the product, uh, if it's straight grain, a lot of the straight grains, there's a diverter. It'll just run it right through the leg and over to the aspirator cleaning system. Yeah. And then it goes through, gets cleaned a third time, and then it goes up to our bag and bin. But we also got that diverter. Switch it to the mixer, two ton at a time comes through the mixer we add soybean oil keep the dust down keep it fresh yeah add soybean oil and it's got a minimum of about i think 90 seconds mix time and not bad at all then unloads itself which is nice opens up 
heads on through. Okay. So you screen it so many times for dust. Is it, there many fines and everything in it, or? I mean, <clears throat> depending on the product, depending on the grain, there there is. I mean, we get those truckloads in. He gets most of it, yeah. but then we add cracked corn and we add a few other dirtier items to the mix. And this aspirator system just takes all that right out. It takes a lot of the fines, a lot of the holes. You know, some of the holes get through. Yeah. And, it's a weird compliment, but we've had the compliment we have the cleanest bird seed that people have ever seen. Which, <laughs> Something you don't think about. Yeah. Don't think it makes too much of a difference, but you're selling to the customer, not the birds. So. Yeah, that's true. And then as far as bagging, one smaller bags, one bigger bags? Or? Uh, we do 10 pounders, uh, six, seven, six, eight, nine, and 10 pounders bale bags. Yeah. And then they get, you know, five per bale bag. And, we sell them like that. Okay. We don't sell them the individual 10 pound bags. We just sell the bale bags of five of them. Yep. And then just put in that bagging head. It uh, weighs up 50 pounds at a time, whatever size you do, and weighs it up above, put the bag on, drops right in. Okay. We used to have a hang weight. You put it on, it fill up. Yep. And then once it hit the certain weight, it dropped. That, that was a that, pain. That's a big upgrade. Yes, it was. Yeah, that was a heck of an upgrade. Huh. Crazy. All for birds. Too. Yeah. We did a full Western New York Rhizor for the mill. My old housemate, he's, uh, well, the son. And the, the stuff that goes into making feed, no, nobody ever thinks about it. Nope. Just buy a bag of tractor supply. Or <laughs> and call it good. And and happy birds. Yep. So you were saying... When you run out of inventory over there or get low on one, then you'll bag all that? Yep. Yeah, right now, doing our oil sunflowers is what started the business. Okay. The sales of those have gone down from <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Everybody wants the newer stuff? It used to be the biggest seller now in the emergency. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they didn't grow their own sunflowers here for a long time. Yeah. I'm glad they quit doing it because my mom used to make us come out here and take pictures. <laughs> That's a big thing up by us. I got a buddy, he does pick your own flowers and he grows an acre or yeah. so and people yeah. go out for weddings. And... People pay for some ridiculous stuff now. <laughs> Just post on Instagram. Yep. <laughs> Okay. We're getting a full tour of everything. So, he's over there. What he has to do is actually just put the bag up to it. And then it weighs, it knows how much 50 pounds. It's already have that. Drop it in. It drops. It goes across. And uh, then it ties it. So these ties that you always got to open from one side, that's the machine that does it. It's like a sewing machine there. So this is the aspirator. It's dropping the product down from above and it's blowing air through it, which blows any of dust, debris left out. Here and as you see, right there, stuff flowing back out of it. So that that's another way of cleaning it. Yeah, that's just kind of a final way to get any of the fine dust. Yeah, and that that goes into the building next door. Yeah, that goes over into that fine building with all the canyons and all that. So we get you to the back into the cow feed. Yep. That's cool. And then the product's going back up and going into the bin. Yeah, into those rooms. And then it comes down and goes back through there and yep. gets bagged up. Yeah, that bag will automatically... It weighs 50 pounds out. Yeah. It's above it, the scale, and a little bit of a shaker just to get to that fine. Okay. And this, this is sucking air through it. 
just for whatever dust was still up after the atmosphere and stuff in the So you are, it knows when you put the bag up there? Foot pedal. Oh, you're doing it, okay, you got a foot pedal. I was gonna say, that's really efficient. Here's all your weight right here. Okay. So these are 25 pound bags. Yeah. We, do, we do 25s, 30s, uh, 40s, and 50s. And that's pretty spot on. It's dead on. Like, Are these the size? Are these, are these the size that are 40? Are these? We have these at 40, but the bags are a little bigger. Okay. We just did. John was over here talking to him, so he's uh. You gotta start throwing some. You gotta start loading it. You're on. You're gonna put your 20 pounds on real quick. Being here in America, eating steaks every night. Yep. So they come up to here. Okay. And it blows into here, and then it goes back into the cow feed. Yeah. So he'll come over a couple days a week, two or three days a week. And he'll just come in here with a payloader, scoop it up, put it in a speed mixer, and go dump it. So those harvester silos, yeah. there's no silos in those. Okay. All the additives. So like this hat, this is in one of them, cornmeal, bean meal. Okay, so you use it for dry storage. Yeah. And then like... But they're all in use still? No. No. Only three or four of them. Three. Because harvesters, that's... You really don't see many of them actually still in existence and still in we, use. We used them all till about eight, nine years ago. Yeah. Pretty much once we started building bigger bunkers. Yeah. With a 970 cloth filling a harvest well, store we, is. We uh, didn't have it. No. We didn't have that then. It's like all of this is additives for the cows and stuff. Oh, okay. It's like those feed sacks are all pump fat. You guys feed palm fat, don't you? I think we fed it in New Zealand. You guys get it by the semi or in sacks? Uh, semi. Yeah, see, this is what we got to deal with, sacks of Sacks of it. Huh. So how much is like a semi load? There. You know what I'm saying? A semi load of feed sacks. It's like 40, 50 grand. <gasps> but that'll last us. Like the guy came in August. So yeah. Yeah, it's an ex it's an expensive pay. Oh, it's because you buy it all at once. Yeah, but once it's here, it's here for a while. Yeah, the more you buy it. Typically, it's done by noon. Yeah. And then he, he'll go around and move, move pallets and stuff to put it in over here for the cows. Yep. And he takes care of the little farm up the road for all the hampers on. Seventy-seven tens, both mixer wagons, pretty much identical. identical. They're identical. One has the flat, one top, one top. Yeah. So. They'll get replaced every other year. Oh. So every year we'll get a new one. Yep. So I think the far one gets replaced this year. Okay. And then this one will be replaced next year. Keeping them fresh because when you're feeding cows, it, yeah. when it goes down, it goes down and you're not feeding cows. Usually the same guy will always buy one of our usual. Okay. This is all. All water storage? All, all water, yep. So all the wells come in and we'll drop into this back tank and everything else is just grab your fed. Yep. So the two big lines are two wells each mm -hmm. and the rest are singles. Because cows do drink a little bit of water. Yeah. Like, so like, bathtub a day. See what the per cow. Fed. So if they get short and that's a normal thing, um, when water slows down in wells, they might have to truck they do have to truck water, which I have a lot of friends that do truck a lot of water um, to keep the cows good. About 40, 50,000 gallons of water. 40, 50,000 gallons of water. Just for the milk cows. Just for the milk cows. That's a lot of bathtubs. So you guys have an idea. Because we trucked one of these out to Indiana. 
Goli Goliath unloader or whatnot. There's the chain that goes around, if you guys can see that. That's quite, that's quite some storage. Bought. So we were at Getty's the other day, and they still use their harvest stores to put feed in it, but they, up well, they switched out unloaders, uh, and they're actually, what are they called? I'm gonna put it down in below. But they took their bottom unloads out, and uh, they liked them, but as they said, it was before they had a self-propelled chopper, and now they probably could get away with the bottom unloads and not have such a problem. Yeah, so this is what we call feed room. So. That's quite the setup. Yeah. So you got cornmeal. Yeah. Cornmeal. So some of these harvesters are still in use. And then you got the grain bin there. So they're cornmeal. I think this is just the bird feed finds. Bird feed finds go into there. That's cool though. That's quite the setup for. I think that one. That one's all from the corn cracker. Okay. So this is all the stuff that doesn't. From when he cracks, all the inside that doesn't. Yep. So. And then those are all run into conveyors. Yeah. And then up and into the mixer. Yeah, the mixer will back in there, and then. This that scale will automatically connect to the mixer. Okay. So he'll know what he's loading as yeah, he'll know what his weight is when he's loading. And you guys were saying you feed two loads a day or yeah. feed twice a day to the cows. Yeah. Each barn a few more than two loads a day, but oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, more of a compact. And this was the old dairy. But you're still yeah. using you're still using the parlor for treated cows, uh, yeah. fresh cows. Yes. Yeah, and we'll keep beef beef cows, beef cows in there. Over in that section, that it's just a small pen that comes up to this. And then... So was this set up this way prior to when you were using it for? Yes. When it was when it was silage and yeah, this is forages I guess in it because that's all like. That's very well thought out. Yeah, that was all I, I like that. Before. I know. You got. You should build some upright silos. You'd be the first ones. No. Is there some? I think the one that has the corn, corn crack finds it. It's, it's got two kinks in it. Yeah. From, where, from just it's crinkled. Oh. This this grain leg here comes out of the pit that we drove over. Oh, okay. That's why that tarp. Yep. Plastic there, and that goes up, and that goes into all these. There's pipe. Yeah. Well, these two can just get right to the top. Yep. And drop and in. That one with the corn finds has a just pretty much a grain like pipe. Yep. Welded into the side. That's wild. Yeah, we don't. Very well thought out. Yeah, we don't. We don't gotta blow anything anymore. Yep. The only time we gotta use the blower is some years we'll get cotton seed. Yep. When the corn is bad on starch. And you'll put that in the uprights? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, they'll... The semis can't dump into the pit. Yeah. The blower is just big. Pretty much like scrap trailers with just a fly bottom. Yep. Because they're big trailers and it's cotton seed. It's light. Yeah. But to blow it, we, we got to spray water on it as we blow. Yep. So we pack down. That makes sense. So they'll, they'll dump it in the bunkers. And, and then you... He'll load it in the mixer and bring it up. They, they only go, so all the heifers agree up there, yeah. come down and they eat in that open alley and they'll be in the old barn. And there's two bowls in there just in case one doesn't take to the yeah. AI. Yeah. So they're clean up, yeah. they're clean up bowls. They're not too mean. Till the day they are. You can never... You can never trust the bull, especially not a Jersey one. When we chop corn, we'll put a 
So you can feed from both ends or? No. Okay. And well, then they'll, they'll just feed out of they'll get hay out of those. Yep. And then they'll feed out the corn at because they'll feed this corn first because this one's already empty. That's for the cow from this spring. Okay. So we'll fill this one first, and that one will be empty, because it's gotta be empty before we start filling. Yep. We won't fill corn, new corn on top of old corn. Okay. So it'll be empty. And it'll be timed out enough to work by this corn we put in front here will be fermented enough to feed. Start feeding out of there and then that yeah. can get filled and then completely. They'll feed all that and then they'll start into this one. And then they'll go back to the hay out of that bunk. Okay. That is a big horde bunks. Like these two are 300 by 100, 60 by 100, and then 240 by no, 60 by 300, and then 240. And those are solid, solid walls all the way through? No. Okay. These were just, so. When we built them, the bottom was just a single wall where the middle is. Yeah. So one of the walls started to break. So they, so from through here is dirt, and there's more cement. Okay. So they filled the center with dirt. They poured cement on the outsides and filled the center with dirt. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, just the silage pushes. It's a lot of force, especially yeah. when you're really packing it correctly. And then this is your silage leachate pond. Yeah. Jono, jump in. I won't be taking you with us, but. So yeah. previously we were over there. Now we're on the other side, 45, 55, four post, which is, that's a unit. Four post is not a typical thing you see on that. So they bed everything with straw. This is pretty fresh pack. And they had the front closed because they came through and bedded everything but and then they're gonna come bed this scrape it because the cows are actually in milk in that group so very very unique on this this scale of cows to have straw bedding everybody's sand is king as everybody says um, and then you'll get some sawdust on this scale or manure solid stuff like that i appreciate it I'm gonna have to get sizes for you guys, so. Absolutely awesome tour, great people. The bird seed was wild, and well, they're getting some merch. I'm gonna send it down to them, so. Gotta let them get back to work. You know, it is a working dairy farm, and they do a lot of different things. They're back to milking. We're gonna head down the road. Well, we are Shania Twain bound. John has never seen her. I've never seen her. John has never tailgated. So I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys on the next one.